Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. We are now rapidly approaching the festive season, so will the weather bring any Christmas cheer? Well, I'm going to start as usual by taking a look at the view across the Pambi North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 19th. And at the outset, there are some heavy outbreaks of rain just clearing from the southeast. It's an Atlantic driven pattern though, tightly packed ice bars indicating quite windy conditions. Also, notice the intense area of high pressure sitting down there to our southwest. I think that's going to be working very hard through the next week or two to keep things often quite mild. But let's have a look. So I'm going to run the sequence and what we see in the short term is another area of low pressure track into the north, very tightly packed isobars there through Thursday. There could be some disruptive winds I'll look at in a moment. Then as we head towards and into the Christmas period itself, for some indications of it turning colder, at least for a short time, and at least in the north. Uncertainty about whether this colder air is going to make it all the way down to southern counties, and I'll look at that as well in a moment. But just continuing the animation, we see some wintry showers, a technical white Christmas in parts of the north, but then it's rather a changeable picture through to the end. Some indications here on this particular model run of colder conditions maybe returning into the north once more after a milder push through Boxing Day. But by this point, the details are very uncertain. I think the key message is that it's going to be very windy at times, quite unsettled too. The jet stream and upper air temperature profile associated with the same computer model run from the GFS, the model shade and of course indicates the track of the jet stream, the UK is somewhere there. Blue is cold air at about 1500 meters aloft. Yellows and oranges are indicating mild air. So as I run this, there are some changes through the week, but not tremendous ones. It's basically more of the same, perhaps a jet stream here around the Christmas period and just after it's sinking a little bit further south, given a greater chance of colder conditions into the northern half of the UK in particular. But this is just one computer model run, of course. Having a look at some of the temperature forecasts associated with it, maximums on Wednesday, mild, double figures there across much of England and Wales, forwards to Saturday. If anything, values have now gone up a little bit, especially there in the north. It's indicating some very mild conditions in eastern Scotland, 12 Celsius in the afternoon, so uh, notably mild really for this time of year, year in that part of the UK. Forwards though to Christmas Day, a significantly colder picture is being shown, particularly in the north. As I said on that computer model run, there were some wintry showers being shown as a possibility at least. In, in the south, I think you'd probably describe it as seasonal, not far off the average, but certainly colder than earlier in the week. But it's not a given that that cold air will be pushing down into the south, as I've mentioned. Here is the Mogreps G ensemble plot from the uh, UK Met Office model. It's showing maximum temperatures on Christmas Day in the afternoon. And if you just have a look at some of these stamps closely. Each one represents the forecast from one run in the ensemble model. Quite a few of them are showing double figures or close to double figures in southern Britain. So although the GFS uh, deterministic run was indicating a seasonal feel to things in the south on Christmas Day, it could well still be mild for chance of cold conditions according to the GFS and this ensemble plot is significantly higher in the north of Britain. Winds are going to be a big factor as well for the first week, as I've mentioned. Um, the chart on the left here is showing maximum gusts again from the Mogreps G model. It's for Leeds. The key period, I think, is going to be the 21st of December. Gusts up to around 55, 60 miles an hour is what most of the individual runs are going for. On the right, it's 12 GMT Thursday, the 21st. It's the overview across the UK as a whole using data from the deterministic high resolution UKV model. Strongest winds there are likely to be in the northern half of the United Kingdom and there could well be some disruption. Just looking a little bit beyond Thursday, 
there's quite a big spread there on the Leeds ensemble plot. Some runs, again, bringing in windy conditions later on, but the main period to focus on appears to be here, Thursday the 21st. Could well be some disruption. Rainfall. These are the aggregates for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models. With the Atlantic dominating things, it's wettest in the north and the west, but some rain even in central and southeastern parts of England. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, the same pattern is maintained, but totals have increased now. Very wet potentially in western Scotland, but closer to average amounts of rainfall once you move down into central and eastern parts of England. So, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the uh, GFS model, which the animation was based on, Tuesday the 26th, so Boxing Day. Quite a mixed picture, as I've already indicated. Colder air there, more likely to be pushing into the north. High pressure and milder conditions may be in southern counties. But all in all, there's an Atlantic flow there, so the key thing is it's changeable at this point. The Canadian model, similar, really subtle differences as ever, but the same broad scale picture. Low pressure areas to the north, high pressure to the south. It, but this type of pattern can produce short cold snaps, but a long cold period, which I know lots of people are asking about now, is not likely to develop from it. We really need to see high pressure building over Greenland or Scandinavia, the Iceland area, for the UK to experience a long and sustained spell of wintry wet weather. No sign of it on this. The German icon, similar really, low pressure to the north. The European ECM is the same story, and it's the same story on the UK Met global model. Slight differences, as I say, between the individual deterministics there, but there's good agreement. It's basically an Atlantic-driven pattern. Colder conditions more likely in the north. When I say colder, not particularly cold, so snow mostly reserved for high ground, so Scottish mountains may be higher parts of the Pennines. Although on Christmas Day there is a chance of wintry showers and snow falling down to lower levels in the northern half of the UK. So technical white Christmas not out of the question. How do things shape up as we head into and through week two? As ever at this range, it's just about the general direction of travel, the trends and the probabilities of most likely scenarios using the ensemble data. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. 850 HPA temperatures across the top there, so 1500 meters above sea level again. Fluctuating, there's quite a big spread, but the key thing here is that none of the runs are really bringing in a sustained period of cold weather. Some are dipping down there below the thick black line, the 30 year average. All in all though, it looks likely to be a changeable pattern. That's reinforced by the number of rain spikes across the bottom. They continue to appear. So probably a Positive North Atlantic oscillation continuing, high pressure to the southwest, close to the Azores, maybe ridging north eastwards towards the UK at times, low pressure close to Iceland. All in all, it's very typical. Forwards to the two meter uh, temperature data tables for London, and it really just reflects what I've been saying. Maximums across the top there, the light greens dominating 6 to 10 Celsius for nighttime lows here. There is some Dark green, so frost not out of question, ground frost not out of question when we get quieter and drier interludes, clear skies, allowing temperatures to dip. Very, very little blue showing up. The blue indicates uh, values of 0 Celsius or lower, so those would suggest an air frost, but not much sign of that at all on these data tables. Forwards to Manchester, it's a very similar story, so I'm going to well, one thing I will just quickly mention is that the snow row values across the very bottom are a bit higher, reaching a maximum of 7, 7 out of 33. Not a great chance of falling snow, but it's not completely out of a question through this period. The uh, numbers on the, on the London snow row were a good deal lower. Two metre temperature data tables from Manchester. It's a very similar story. Lots of light green there. It's quite a bit of dark green on the overnights, minimums. A little bit more blue than on London, but not really troubling at all. 
forwards to Glasgow. There are some differences with this one. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, is tending to stay below the 30 year average of thick black line for much of week two, just a little below it. It suggests that perhaps polar maritime air masses will be moving down across the north at times, across Scotland at times. And it's a very wet picture, actually. Lots of spikes there, and that fits in with the uh, aggregate rain charts, which I just showed for the northwest of the UK. That risk of rain continues through the second week. The snow row values, sevens, eights there, so a chance of snow falling down to lower levels through the second week in Scotland. But I think it's really a pattern which supports significant snow over the Scottish mountains, but not down to low level, at least not consistently. There could be some at times transient, but I think it really is one for these Scottish mountains. It may be good for the Scottish ski resorts, but with that said, often experience tells me that when something like this is shown up on the GEFS, the outcome is a little bit milder than is indicated, and even, even at, say, 2,000 feet, there's, there's a tendency for rain rather than snow to fall, and it's when you go up to the higher parts of the Scottish mountains that the snow risk really increases. So possibly good for the Scottish ski resorts, but some question marks there. The two-meter temperature data tables for Glasgow fitting in there with the upper air temperature profile, so there's more dark green here through the day, so it is colder. Also, a greater risk of frost shown by the increased amount of blue in those columns through the night. Just at the end there, perhaps, there is a trend for that amount of blue to increase, the chance of frost rising, but there could just be, that could just be ensemble noise at this range. I wouldn't pay too much attention to it at the moment. It's looking for that pattern to be maintained through subsequent updates rather than just as a one-off. The ECM ensemble rain probability charts, these show the likelihood in percentage terms of five millimeters or more rain falling on the first three days of the second week. This looks like quite a wet picture, which has been highlighted, but once more, the highest rain totals in, well, in the greatest probability of high rain totals is in the west of the UK. The orange shading there suggesting something like a 60 to 80% chance. Moving forwards to the next three days, the same pattern is maintained. By this range, the individual runs within the ensemble will be suggesting a more diverse range of solutions. So the darker orange is becoming a little bit lighter, indicating a lower degree of confidence. But as I say, it's fairly clear from this that there's strong support for an Atlantic pattern to be maintained. And the GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Friday the 29th of December reinforces the message. There's a westerly flow pushing across the UK, maybe colder there in the north, well, colder relative to the south for sure, according to this, but perhaps some indications, as I've been saying, of polar maritime air moving down into Scotland, at least through some of the days. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, going through the second week. Greens, blues, mostly indicating areas of low pressure being dominant. The yellows, well, that's a mix, 1,011 to 1,025, but generally above average pressure for the time of the year. But I think, on the whole, the signal here is for an unsettled pattern to persist. Areas of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic. So no sign of a prolonged period of dry weather, but of course, drier interludes are likely on some days. Is there any sign of a major sudden stratospheric warming that, if it happened, would potentially lead to or increase the chance of a significant cold spell several weeks down the line? This is the 16-day GEFS plot, so we're going out to about the 3rd of January. It shows zonal wind speeds. A key thing here to look for is a reversal. So if the lines drop below north into the negative territory, that would indicate a major sudden stratospheric warming event. So nothing is going down below north miles an hour into a reversal. But there are some indications there, and there have been for a good while now, that the uh, zonal wind speeds will be slowing down in early January. Does that increase the chance of cold weather? Well, 
possibly it does as we head through the month. I think it's quite tenuous. Depends how this propagates down to the troposphere, down to the lower levels. But the key thing is that there isn't currently a major sudden stratospheric warming event being forecast, at least not by the GEFS. Some of the updates from the European ensemble model have been more supportive of it, but it's just a possibility at this stage. It's something to keep an eye on. No definites. And even if it happens, it may not lead to colder weather until late January or early February, if at all. Okay, to summarise, week one, it's unsettled with wet and windy periods. There is that potential for very windy conditions on Thursday, especially in the northern half of the UK. Often mild, but maybe colder later, and that colder incursion could well coincide with the Christmas period. Will it reach southern Britain? Maybe, maybe not. The greatest chance for technical white Christmas, though, is definitely in the north. There's just a low chance as well as milder air returns later on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, that there could be some transient snow as that disturbance moves in from the Atlantic. But the devil is in the details there, and I wouldn't put too much stock in that outcome at this stage. Week two, changeable. Rain in all areas, but wettest in the north and west. There may be some snow in the north, especially over high ground. Temperatures fluctuate around the average, but cold incursions are more likely in the north. Although even there, I suspect they will be fairly transient if and when they occur. So, uh, there we have it. A mixed bag for the festive season. At least that's how it's looking. There is a chance of colder conditions coinciding with Christmas Day, especially in the northern half of the UK, and therefore a technical white Christmas in places is a distinct possibility. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And all that remains now is for me to wish you a very, very happy Christmas. I'll try and do another update before the new year, but if I don't get round to it, then a happy new year and all the very best for 2024. Thank you very much now. Bye.